Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take a variable or a constant that's in your VBA code and specify that as a default value in a form field, which isn't as easy as you might think. Today's question comes from Eduardo from Hollywood, Florida, one of my gold members. He posted this in the forums on my website today. He said, if I have a global constant, my server equals, and then some IP address, how do I put that in the default value field in a form? Apparently, you cannot put a global constant or variable there, and that is correct. You can't just directly put that in the default value field. Hence my screenshot here. You'll get a pound name, just like that. Let me show you. Oh, but first, this is a developer class. That means you'll need to know some VBA, and if you don't know VBA, you can go watch this video. It'll teach you all the basics. This, this particular problem is a little bit beyond the basics. You'll need to know what variables are. Go watch this video. And go watch this video on variable scope and visibility where I talk about stuff that's public, private, form modules versus public modules, all that kind of stuff. So here's what Eduardo's trying to do. We've got a global module out here. And in here, you can declare constants and variables that are public so that everybody in the database can use them. For example, we can say public constant, let's call it uh, my string, and give it a value equals x, okay? And he's using it for what it looks like as IP addresses. Now, in your VB code, okay, if you come out here and try to, let's say, in this hello world button, let's just message box my string. All right, we'll get rid of that. Okay. Uh, if I hit the button, there's my X. Okay, but what Eduardo wants to do is he wants to use that in the default value for a field, like right here. Now, if you just type in here my string, access converts that into an actual string. All right, so we don't want that. If you put my string in here like that, thinking it's like a form field, let's see what happens. Let's close this, come back in here, All right? Go to a new record and pound name, okay? Same thing occurs if you do equals my string, okay? And same problem, all right? Access at the form level can't read those VBA variables and constants like that. It's just you can't do it. But what you can do is you could load those into the default value property when the form loads, okay? For example, let's come back in here, get rid of the default value out of here, okay? Now, let's go to the forms events and go to the on load event like this, all right? This, this will run when the form opens or loads. Now, you might be tempted to say, all right, let's say first name dot default value equals my string. All right, you're tempted to do that. That's how you can change the default value property of the first name field. And you'd think that would work, but let's see what happens. I'm still getting pound name, okay? Here's what you gotta do, it's tricky, all right? You have to literally tell default value what its actual default value is going to be. And since that's a global constant or variable, it's not gonna change at this point. So you'd have to say, watch this, it's crazy. Inside of a string, go equals, and then double, double quote, then your string, then close it up like that. If you're not familiar with the double, double quotes, I got a whole separate video on that. All right, go watch my concatenation double, double video, okay? Essentially, what this is doing is it's saying that the default value is exactly equal to equals quote x quote that itself is now the default value so when it loads up the default value gets set equals to equals quote x okay i know it's weird but that's the way you got to do it and now if you close that and open it up and go to a new record there's your default value okay I, yeah it's hey i don't come up with this stuff i just teach you how to how to use it um, if you're doing it with other variable types, numeric or dates, you got to change them accordingly. If you've got, um, let's do public 
constant my number equals one, two, three, and public constant my date equals one, one, 1990. Then we'll save that, come back out here, and we'll do the same trick, design view. All right, uh, we got family size and customer sets. Okay, so in here, wait, go to here. There we go, in the form load, right? Um, what is it? Uh, family size dot default value equals, and it's going to be equals and my number, right? And then customer sense dot default value equals equals. You always got to have that equals equals in there. And, oh, I'm sorry. And we need the pound sign and our date and close the pound sign. Okay. Save it. Close it, close it, open it, and boom. There you go. There's your default values. And they're set when the form loads. And that works with constants. Now, if you got variables and the variables can possibly change elsewhere in your code, you might need to run this in the on current event or some other, somewhere else. This will work fine for constants because constants never change. Now, this is actually the hard way to do this. I personally would rather use a temp var. I know Adam's probably going all excited right now. Instead of using constants, constants have their own set of problems. For example, if, you're, if your database encounters any kind of a VBA error, those constants get reset. You have to restart the database. Temp vars will usually survive um, having, having the database error out. So let's get rid of these constants, okay? And let's get rid of the code in here that sets those. Get rid of that form load event. Okay. Now, a temp var is something that you have to set in code yourself to, but we're going to do it in our startup form. Okay. So in the form, we'll use the main menu as our startup form. So when this guy loads up, we'll initialize our variables in the on load event. All right. Pay no attention to do startup. That's code for me. I put that in there. You, we'll just get rid of that for now. In the form load event here, I'm going to say temp vars, and then we'll call it uh, first name default, maybe, whatever, equals Rick. Okay, so now when this form loads up, it's going to set temp vars, first name default equals Rick. Okay, then all we have to do, all right, start that form up. Now the temp vars is initiated. Now we'll go into our, our customer form here, design view, and that we can put in the default value equals temp bars, first name default. You can use those in default value fields, in form fields, in queries. You can use temp bars everywhere. I've got a more in-depth lesson on temp bars coming out soon. Don't worry. I know I've been putting it off and putting it off because there's so much to cover with it. It's probably going to be a tech help video and a developer lesson on it. All right. But now run it, go to a new record. Boom. There's your default value. See? That's so much easier than using constants. I almost never use constants anymore. I use temp bars for pretty much everything. And they've got their limitations too, but I don't know. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, check out my developer lessons. I got lots of them. I think we're up to like developer 44 now or 43. One of those. There's so lots and lots and tons of stuff. And I go over it in the right order. This is the way you should learn it, right? Step one, step two, step three. You'll be a developer just like me in no time. Well, in, no, in at least 43 hours. Some of them are more. I don't know. Yeah, this one's three hours. This one's three hours. So uh, we'll, we'll say uh, maybe 100 hours. I don't know. <laughs> but there you go. There's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. 
But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. 
Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.